table. Oh, and it's wrapped in canvas because the clay doesn't stick to canvas. So that's why this is like this. So today I'm going to show you. Did you start already? Okay, cool. Did you show me walking around the room too? Okay, um, okay so today we're going to add coils to our pinch pot, right? Our like space. Mine are, I'll leave these out so you guys can feel them. They're like perfect. They're cheese hard. I even might think that it might be a little too hard. They, they hold this form, they're not wiggly, um, but they're definitely, it's definitely pliable, right? It will move if I wanted to. I can still like push the clay around. I can put dents in it with my finger. This is like really good. So we made this like nice round thing that will hold its shape. Now we don't want to set this on the table, right? Because if we were to set this on the table, well, what would happen, do you think? Okay, totally. What else? Ellie? What? You said it, I think. It'll flatten, right? It'll get like a flat side. That doesn't look good. Nobody wants a flat a ball with like a flat side, that's annoying. So we're always gonna say on something soft. My suggestion for you all is to get like a, a paper towel and make a, a nest for it, right? So that when you're working on it, it can spin freely at your desk, but it's not resting on the table, okay? So we're gonna slip and, we're gonna slip and score a coil onto here. So I'm just gonna take a chunk of clay, I'm gonna make a coil. The Japanese have this really cool method where they take like a big chunk of it and they just like, they make this like perfect coil like this. Not as perfect, but I don't know how they do it. They like, they take this giant chunk and they look at this and it's like this beautiful, amazing coil. I can't do that. The trick about making coils is even pressure throughout the whole thing. And you want the entire coil to spin as you're working on it. And you want to work, I always work from the middle out and if you guys notice that the middle spins as well. So I'm just gonna keep rolling it until it's even. It's okay if it's not like perfectly round. That's good. You wanna make sure your coil is longer than your circumference of the piece or that when you add it, you're gonna have like a lump like this. Let's see how I missed a chunk here. That's not what you want to do, right? Okay, so now depending on where we add the coil to this, we'll make it go in or out, right? If we add it to more of the outside, it's gonna go out, if we might add more to the inside, it will go in. So we're making a ball, so where do you think I should add it? Outside, yeah, totally, right? We're gonna to add to the outside rim. So this uh, tool that's serrated, it's called the scoring tool. Um, what it does is it scores the clay. It makes it really rough. So the reason we're making it rough is because we're gonna push wet clay into these grooves and then they're gonna to mix together with some slip and the wet clay and they'll be one. They have a better chance of blending together. So I'll take that. Inside of these little cool orange bladed containers is slip. Slip is just clay and water in a more liquidy form. These are just a normal old paintbrush. I like stiff paintbrushes when I'm doing slip and I'm just gonna paint it on. There's no right or wrong way to paint on the slip. You can use water too, like if you um, are in a pinch and you're like, I'm not a slip, Mr. Gauss. You can totally just use water. Slip works a little bit better because that gap that we're creating, we're just filling it with clay rather than just water. So it can work just a smidge better. Okay, now I'm gonna take my coil and I'm gonna push it onto where I just scored. Outside of the rim. Oh man, cut that just a little too short. All right, so now I'm gonna, I can hold it in my hand. I always like tell you, try to tell you guys to hold it as much as possible in your hand. So I'm just gonna, push it. careful. I'm gonna push it down with my hands and then I'm gonna smooth the inside. So, can you get a close up shot? 
I'm going to smooth it in the inside of with my fingers. Then once I get the inside all done, I'm going to go to the move to the outside. I'm going to smooth that all together. Just like what about that gap though? We don't want that. Anymore. What gap? This? Yeah. I can fill that in with like a little chunk of clay if I want. Or what I'm going to do is my next one, I'm just going to keep going. It may have a little lip in here, but it'll be fine. We'll put it all together. So once I get it all smoothed out, right? Now this doesn't have to be perfect because after we do like a few layers, we're going to end up paddling this, which is the whole, uh, which is another process which I'm going to demo how to do tomorrow. So when you get it all blended together, blah 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 blah, pretend I blended it all together. I'm going to set it back down on my little nest. And I'm going to make another coil. I'm going to do it again. Now, I would only do like maybe one or two coils at a time, maybe three if you're feeling really confident in your skills. Um, because if you do too many, then it will just kind of like fall apart. Okay, because there's just too much clay that it can't um, blend together and it'll just like flop over. So what I would say is maybe do one or two, or two or three um, coils together, then let it sit. I would spray this and then wrap it in a plastic bag and then put it in my shelf, okay? Um, these dried out fairly well, maybe like a little bit more than I thought they would. So the studio seems to be a bit on the dry side, so make sure that you take that into factor when you're wrapping stuff up today. If you wrap it, am I gonna see you tomorrow? So wrap it like you would, just wrap it lightly and you guys will be okay. Any questions? All right, so yesterday, how many, how many pounds of clay do you start with? Thank you, Evan. 1.5. Um, how wide is the your ball need to be? Nine. Nine inches. Way to go, George. Smart guy. Okay. Get to work. <laughs>